It's the most nominated film at this year's Oscars, the one that everyone yes. is talking about, including the president of the Academy. Everything, everywhere, <laughs> all at once. There's been so much talk about this film. I mean, I did a podcast on this that we, you've you did, already referenced. Yes. What do you have to, to say about everything, everywhere, all at once? I don't know if I have any conclusions to give you, but I can tell you how I felt. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to feel about this movie. Hmm. As I was watching it, I thought it was the most outlandishly audacious and absurd and creative film I've seen in a long time. Mm. I was sitting there saying, what? What the fuck? <laughs> over and over and over again mm -hmm. because of the sheer audacity. And I have to give them credit for this mm -hmm. because I've never seen a movie quite like this. And I'm, right. I'm, it's, it's interesting that it's, it's nominated for, you know, it's leading the awards because it's such an absurd film. Yeah. But at the same time, it brought up reminders of films like Don't Look Up, Adam McKay, the Safdie brothers, like, you know, Uncut Gems and Good Time, a kind of ADHD style of filmmaking. Yeah. And maybe it's just that there's a generation of filmmakers who love Scott Pilgrim. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think a generation that maybe took a lot of prescription meds to deal with anxiety and depression, I don't know. But yeah, it's really, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. So I was utterly fascinated by the spectacle. It's a lot of mm. style and a lot of flash for what was really, I felt, a fairly basic immigrant story. Mm -hmm. And I usually have a problem with films that render very simple stories in flashy clothing but at the same time, I was kind of blown away by the imagination and the audacity of it. So I'm conflicted. Mm. But I want to ask you if you could give kind of maybe a, a brief summary of some of the disagreements um, that you had with your guest about this film. Well, first of all, I want to acknowledge that in terms of like visual effects, you know, they had a very small team that took a very mm. kind of DIY approach to the visual effects. And they were very well done. Um, I was impressed mm -hmm. kind of overall by the look of the film. I think the cinematography was quite good as well. Mm -hmm. And I do appreciate any film that is audacious and that does kind of take, if not risks, at least an outside the box approach mm -hmm. to filmmaking. My problems with the film are that down the line, its entire sensibility from its aesthetic choices to its more thematic elements are 100% designed for the social media age. Yeah. There is nothing outside of social media that this film is commenting on, drawing from. Yeah, that's right. I mean, okay, you could argue like Daniel Kwan, you know, his, his mother, there's an element of the immigrant experience that, that he draws from to depict these characters but it seems so you know bound up with with all these social media elements that mm -hmm. it cheapens that and it renders it very kind of the word that um that kept coming up when i saw i saw it with a group of friends and one of my friends kept mentioning the word twee and i can't yeah. get that word <laughs> out of my head because it's such yes. a great description of this of film. Of so many things, actually, yes. What is twee? Um, it's kind of like something that's overly cutesy, you know, that's... Um, it's Scott Pilgrim. Excessively sentimental. Yeah, yeah, it's Scott Pilgrim. And I guess I just... And, and even the sort of risks that it did take, you know, like, um, I don't know, the, the dildo scenes... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to remember some of the other things like the rocks and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, right. It's just, it's all stuff you would see on social media. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't yep. consider this really out there. I just think films or at least enough members of the Academy have caught up with the already existing online sensibility that they're able to like recognize it when it's made into a film. I don't think that's why it was nominated, though. I, I think it was nominated because it is an immigrant story. Uh, I think it actually, it hits both of those kind of targets. I mean, I mean, I think there are a lot of people who probably are impressed by its audaciousness and the fact that it's also an immigrant story. 
And the fact that, you know, at least people thought that Michelle Yeoh was going to be the first Asian ever to be yeah. nominated for Best Actor, which is actually not true. I think all the way back in 1935, there was an actress who didn't identify as Asian, but was, was nominated, Merle Oberon. But if you look it up, actually, there is, depending on how, what you consider to be Asian, mm. what counts as Asian, there are, Michelle Yeoh may be the seventh person. Regardless, I mean, I think it's possible, A, to acknowledge that, you know, Michelle Yeoh did put a lot of work into the, you know, the stunt work and and her mm. performance into this film, that the filmmaking team was able to do a lot with a little uh, with this film, that there are impressive things about the making of the film. I mean, the guys they got to do the stunts are, are basically YouTubers who like to mm. kind of do uh, Hong Kong yeah, that's style right. stunts and classic Hong Kong films. They found them in, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's all very impressive. But at the end of the day, I, I just don't think the film is very good. And I guess I kind of resent <laughs> how much it embraces social media. I mean, yeah, I'm I really like films that are able to deal with complex psychology, what we might now code as like trauma or even identity issues in very ambiguous and revelatory ways, kind of what we're talking about before mm. with cinema. Yeah. And, mm. you know, I mean, there's so many great examples of this. Let's, Wong Gar Wai is a great example. I mean, yeah. uh, James Gray's The Immigrant is a good example of this that, you know, deals with, with the experience of immigrants and stuff like that. I, you know, I'm sure we could come up with, with so many different examples, but this film, I, I just feel like it was pandering to social media sensibilities yeah, I kind of feel like the fandom that's built up around it is is kind of toxic, mm. and I feel like there's just so much, you know, undeserved praise for this movie. Listen, it's fine if you like it. I'm glad that it did well at the box office. In what planet is this best picture? I'm sorry. <laughs> I see what you're saying, uh, and I remember nodding while I was listening to your your podcast on it, and I think. You know, there's some overlap in what you're talking this, what you're describing as this as a social media kind of filmmaking, and what I was thinking of as an ADHD style of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're pro they're probably born of the same, you know, overlapping generation and and kind of tendencies and ways of seeing the world. I agree with you that I always feel like things should be played out in a sensory way, and that by hypermediatizing them, it kind of almost in a strange way deadens your senses. Yeah. So. I agree with you there. Let me just, if I may, close on this thought. Mm -hmm. If Michelle Yeoh wins for Best Actress, we need to give a retroactive Academy Award to Uma Thurman for Kill Bill. Hmm. She deserved it anyway. Because you feel like there's similar sort of performances? No, I feel that Uma Thurman did this way better. Hmm. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, what she went through in, the, in Kill Bill, the extraordinary you know, physical challenges that she had to do in that film, plus giving a performance of tremendous gravity. It, it's still to this day, I'm very upset that she was not nominated for Kill Bill. And maybe it's an unfair comparison because obviously Michelle Yeoh is doing a different character and a different performance, but the thought did come to mind. Yeah, fair point. And, and I would say just as a closing thought too, like mm. the movie is kind of sneaking in, I think, on the basis of this bifurcation between kind of spectacle and art house films, because mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. it kind of like, it bridges the gap between those, for me in a very unsatisfying way, but in a way that may herald the, the sorts of, the new sort of Academy films that mm -hmm. the Academy will respond to. Yeah, And I guess, I don't know, looking back at a lot of the performances and films that were overlooked in the past, and then seeing this film be recognized, I guess it, it makes me a little bit, it makes me, my opinion of this film harsher. I mean, yeah, it's great that a sci-fi film is being recognized. Children of Men was totally ignored. Yeah, it was. You know, that's one of the best yeah. films of the 21st century. Absolutely. And just seeing so many great horror films being ignored, mm -hmm. like the, mm -hmm. the Academy has such a weird relationship with genre filmmaking and kind of out there audacious sort of films. Like the number of times you know, uh, in the past, I said, well, Hereditary should have been nominated. And people are like, oh, it's too yeah. weird. It's too out there. It's like, okay, then this it's is... too scary, too. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> but you choose this yeah. hill to die on? Like, everything ever wrote? I don't know. It's just, perhaps that explains my uh, my feelings about this film, where a movie like 
Avatar and Top Gun, like Top Gun isn't trying to say anything really. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I wasn't really uh, uh, as annoyed by its inclusion. Avatar 2 is trying to say something, but no one's really listening to that message. They're just going <laughs> to see it for the 3D. So again, yeah. that didn't irk me as much because they're just not playing off of social media sensibilities. Yeah, right. And everything everywhere all at once is. And that, honestly, it, it it's like, yeah, it's it's irksome, I'll say. 